It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Good day and welcome to the program. It is Countywide. Brad Miller with you and uh, happy to welcome into studio um, a veteran of Countywide and our uh, airwaves. Gary Johnson is the fire marshal with the Sedona Fire District. We say hello to him. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. All right. It's going to be age before uh, beauty today. <laughs> is okay, it? Before okay. We, yeah, we, we, we say that and Christy, uh, no dispersions intended. But our new guest, uh, Christy uh, Gagnon, is a fire marshal of the Camp Verde Fire District. And you're not the newbie anymore. You've been here for a little while. Yeah, now. yeah, just a year. I just passed my year. But in Prescott before that, and uh, in fire service for yes. some time. So we welcome uh, welcome you as well. Um, we're going to talk today about something that should be on everyone's minds. We are in stage one fire restrictions now. I think really in, in many parts of the state, but certainly in our area, the the listening and viewing area, the folks that we're talking to right now. That includes all of Yavapai County. Um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit, not specifically what stage one means, and then the stage two as it develops as we get a little warmer and a little drier and those kinds of things, but uh, more in generalities. What you really do need to know, what you need to ask yourselves before you step out into the backyard to light that barbecue or that fire pit and what have you, and to just be kind of aware of the decision-making process that our fire officials go through um, all the time, daily really, to, uh, to make it safe and to try to prevent any kind of devastating forest fires, and we've all seen too many of those in, in recent years. So um, if we can kind of start, uh, this actually Christy, something you mentioned to me a week or so ago, that there's really just kind of a, a steady, constant assessment of conditions. And I think a week or two ago now, we've started into the stage one, those mm -hmm. kind of initial ones mm -hmm. that we expect every year at this time. Mm -hmm. um, is that right, that there's a lot of people that really have a say and a play on this thing? Oh, absolutely. There, there are so many agencies that are involved. Uh, there are so many stakeholders when it comes to fire bans and the fire restrictions, uh, including the politicians, you know. Sure. Um, so many agencies have a hand in this in deciding and determining uh, where we're at and it starts long before May rolls around yeah. which we started restrictions on May 22nd <coughs> but for months previously they're monitoring conditions and uh, trying to trying to forecast what it, what we're going to get and what's going to happen and right now it's it's prime we just we haven't seen water in a long time so uh, and it's so dry out there we think, Gary, a lot of times we start with Forest Service because most of us, uh, many of us choose to live here because of our access to public lands, uh, the proximity of those, uh, but those can also be a real potential for, for, for trouble. Um, I, I kind of want to talk today about cities and towns and that, but we, we can't leave you know our forest uh, heritage uh, out of this when we start talking about fire especially. And it seems like as goes the Forest Service and those decisions, so go the municipalities and the fire departments and districts. Is that kind of how we do it now? Is there that, that uniformity born of kind of looking at the public lands and their conditions? Right, because I, th I think one of the things that we need to realize is that, you know, as Christy and I, even though our borders don't touch exactly, <coughs> there's Verde Valley fire in sure, between, sure. Um, and you think about those those areas, fire doesn't doesn't distinguish. It doesn't care whether it's in the Sedona Fire District, it's in the Forest Service, you know, it's just within, <coughs> you know, Camp Verde. It's going to do what it wants to do. And one of the things that, that, that we integrate with the, the Forest Service is that they have that expertise that are able to provide us that information. Yeah. So this isn't something where we go, yeah, it's getting hot, yeah, you know, we haven't had some rain, time to put Let's forest restrictions in place. No. Um, they take a lot of things, a lot of factors into consideration. I mean, they're, gonna, they're the ones that will do the testing on the, on the, on the brush and, and determine what the, the fuel moisture is and, 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 that, and take that in consideration. Another thing is they, they evaluate, for example, how many starts are occurring. You know, how is the public responding? Yeah. Okay. We look at that. The, the weather folks get involved. They tell us, what are we going to project? You know what's kind of happening. Right. You know, and a lot of us, you know, especially as I'm going to say, as old timers, remember monsoons. We had to wait for the three days yeah. to have the humidity, and and they've gone away from that. But still, that's what we're really waiting for. We're waiting for yeah. those that monsoons to come to give us that moisture. Unfortunately, like what's kind of projected for tomorrow is that we may have some dry lightning. Right. So you know, but it's a it's a it's a uh, everyone gets involved. It isn't just. You know your local you know, fire department. It's the cities, the fire departments. You know we're all in this together. We all look at that and and, and make those decisions. <clears throat> we kind of sorta, uh, and I don't want to take away from that, but we kind of sorta start to think Memorial Day, 
and then we start to, generally speaking, start to see some of the monsoon moisture around July 4th. Now, that's not bookend days. Don't put that on your calendar. I can burn here and I can't burn then. Mm -hmm. But it seems to kind of work out that way. And I, I wonder if sometimes uh, we, we don't understand that there's a real scientific approach, as you just described, to setting these rules and kind of putting these restrictions in place. Um, but you also mentioned something there. When we talk, let's here again focus on Yavapai County. We've talked about the forest, the Prescott, Mingus Mountain, and the kind of the high country, and then on up to Flagstaff. But look at Black Canyon City and some of those kind of lower deserts when we get into that. And, and all of that, aren't restrictions or should they be different given those fuel types and terrain types? Well, when you think about Because we say county, it's all across Yavapai County now, and that includes everything. Right. And, you know, one of the discussions, we had a meeting last week, and one of the discussions is the county does have this broken down into basically four major zones. And when you think about the county, just think about when you're coming out of Phoenix. Right. If you If you go to Black Canyon City, you know, the terrain that's down there, right. you go up to Prescott, where Christy was from, right. you know, it's totally different, okay, it's at least 10 degrees cooler, you know, compared, like, when we were there last week, good example is just coming back into the Verde Valley, it was hot when I got out of my car. Sure. But the point, and then you come into the Verde Valley, <coughs> you can see those different areas and those different, those different fuel types. And so as a result, it's very difficult to, to have that paintbrush and go across. But, you know, level one, is somewhat reasonable because we're making some reasonable restrictions. So one of the things that came out of that meeting is, is that the Prescott area uses that those terms level one and level two. Yeah. You know, typically here in the Verde Valley we don't. We just say we go into fire restrictions. Our restrictions are kind of like a level one, kind of modified a little bit. And part of the issue that we run into is, is that it seems to happen relatively quick. I mean, it's not uncommon. We have a large empty lot in front of our fire station, and it's not uncommon for me to go home on Friday, come back on Monday, and that was gr kind of green on Friday yeah. and kind of brown on Monday. Can happen that you know, quick. Yeah, because of that moisture drop. When you think about it, humidity yesterday was like 8, 10%. So you can kind of see where that comes into play. So we have to take some of those factors in, in, into play. And that's that's how part of that decision making is made. Yeah, Christy's agreeing. Yeah, well, and we all have we all have such different climates even within the same county. So yeah. it's, it's important that we all do what's right for our community. What's right for Camp Verde may not be right for Sedona and Prescott. So, uh, yet we need to do a really good job of marketing and getting that information out to the public about what our community's restrictions are because we can't make as a blanket statement of blanket restrictions across the board so it's very, it becomes very com confusing to the public as far as well what am i allowed to do and what am i not allowed to do because it may be different you know from one right. one town to the next you hit on something that here in the news uh, uh, news department you have broadcasting and i'm sure newsrooms all across our county have had a little bit of uh, of difficulty with and you folks have made it actually a lot easier um uh, gary we talk about some of us are old timers um just really even a handful of years ago there'd be um uh, when the restrictions started stage one or stage two They'd start, somebody, the forest, Coconino Forest would start on Wednesday, Prescott the next Thursday, and then the, the different districts and, and, and departments would all, and it would just kind of come out maybe over a two-week period, and that became so confusing for folks. Seems like now everybody just kind of goes on the same day or within a very, very short time span, and I'm sure that's by design. Correct. To help. There's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot of, of, of shall we say, pre restriction conversations yeah. that go on. Yeah. And so as a result, we all get together. And then, you know, that way we can kind of make it happen within that short period of time so that we, we have those similar restrictions, you know. And so you can kind of go, wait a minute, where am I? What do I need to do? Yeah. And that, and so it makes it a lot easier for the public. And the other issue we run into is, is the perfect point. How do we educate the public? Yeah. Because the good news about this is that I've, I estimate middle of July before we'll get some rain, Maybe a little sooner, maybe right. a little later, yeah. but the point is, so when you think about it, we're looking at about eight weeks. So if we start to change things, then you get right back into that education thing. It's kind of like, oh, what can I do today? Mm -hmm. Let me see, can I do this or do I have greater restrictions? So, you know, those are some of the things that we take into consideration as well. One of the other things, um, here again, if I can just kind of refer to our own newsroom that we've left, st somewhat generic, um, stage one restrictions, I, I can't remember who sent it out, but just as a very brief example, there was uh, certain types of fire pits that were screened in were allowed. And that was just in the, what I saw last week. I live in Clarkdale, so I called Clarkdale specifically and asked, and they said no. So you'll see, while they're, I would guess, probably 90% uniform even today, mm -hmm. there are still some variables. And what uh, our news director, Paul David, about two years ago said is, we're just gonna tell everybody, call your local fire jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Have, Christy, have we been telling people to do the right thing? Is that how they should do it? Absolutely, I think, call it's, you up. I think it's best to give the, the general statement, uh, there's the fire ban, no open flames, <clears throat> 
And then if for some reason someone needs to a permit, needs that exception, they can contact their local authority because it's going to be up to the local jurisdiction as to what is allowed and, and what isn't. So yeah. um, rather than trying to get so specific in the message that goes out to the public, it, it's easier just to make the blanket statement and then if there are questions that need follow-up then then we can answer those for each individual. We're continuing to grow in this area but we're still small enough communities. Gary have you seen or could you see yourself on a Tuesday it's windy and it's very very warm and a guy needs to do some 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 welding work and you can't get him that permit but say by Thursday conditions may have changed enough that you can on a case-by-case -case basis or do we just get once those restrictions are in place, that's how it's going to be until we get that monsoon rain. And we we understand that people, you know, have their livelihoods are affected by yeah. this. So we so we understand that they need to, you know, continue to do the work, and we need to apply a little bit of what I call common sense to that. And so, um, what I actually have, and my fire inspector has in our vehicles, we have a, a permit and a copy of the fire code that it pertains to welding and hot, what we call hot works. Sure. So that so if I come across somebody doing some work, I will just stop. And part of that is I'll issue them a permit, it's no cost, you can do it right then and there, and I educate them. Yeah. Because I think if we, we made a little reference to the La Barranca fire, right. it was a situation there was a single employee working and doing some grinding. And unfortunately, when he realized that a fire had started by his feet and looked, it was too late. The yeah. fire had already taken off. Yeah. So again, it's reminding folks of those important steps that they need to take to prevent that because we're at that that heightens where that small mistake that maybe they got away with in the sense let, let's say in March when you know the, the weather was better and, and the train was you know was, was was wasn't as dry whereas today you don't always have that right that, that gap where you're able to make that happen a good example you know same token so if people have we'll go out we'll take a look at it and evaluate it and I've had it when you know we've got this won't work today let's give us a few days call me every day Let's see what we can make happen. Common because, sense. Common sense. And, and if we do that, then people who are working can get their jobs done, the projects can get done, and yet at the same token, we don't have to worry about, as I, as I kind of tease a little bit, having to go to work. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. So. We need to take a short break. We'll go ahead and we'll do that. Uh, Christy Gagnon, Gary Johnson, they're here talking fire safety and prevention. It's June, folks. Uh, fire season is uh, reaching its peak very quickly. We'll have more after this. Here in northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. With over a hundred years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Welcome back to the program. It is countywide. Our uh, guest today, Christy Gagne and Gary Johnson, fire marshals, respectively with Camp Verde and Sedona Fire Districts. And uh, we, I, I, here again, don't want to talk in, in real, real specifics because there are some subtle differences amongst the various uh, departments and, and jurisdictions. Um, but there are certain things at this point, Christy, that we're just 
not being not allowing. Uh, and this doesn't mean just public lands and whatnot. We're talking in the backyard, mm -hmm. uh, grilling and things like that. We need to kind of look at. Can you kind of help me with some of the some of the items that right now are I don't know, banned or not permitted, sure. given our our stage one restrictions? Well, for the sake of understanding, I'm going to make the blanket statement of no open flames. Uh, if it at all can be avoided, right. barbecue grilling. If it's in a, a barbecue that has a lid that has a screen, we're allowing. Tiki torches, they're just unnecessary at this time. They create a nice ambiance, but is it, right. is it really worth the risk right. um, with such dry, dry conditions that we have right now? So in Arizona, we're so used to being outdoors and we're very comfortable with it. We're used to the camp, having the campfires while we're out. Um, but right now, that just kind of creates a complacency amongst yeah. the, the public and what we're what we're doing in our own backyards. And so we can sometimes have that mentality of, oh, I've done this a million times, I'm fine with it, and um, but we have to be vigilant with what we're doing on a daily basis right. and um, just understanding that the perfect conditions coming together can create a catastrophe. And we may not even realize it. Uh, and again, we're so used to I've done this a million times. There's there's no threat here. It's it's nine fine. months it's out of the year. It, Absolutely, it's not a problem. Right. But now is the time when it is. Absolutely. So we have to be vigilant. If it's not necessary to have an open flame, let's avoid it right. if we can. Right, uh, Gary. It seems like given that, uh, so you kind of remove you know remove that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like really what it would come down to isn't the device, the grill, the tiki torch, what have you. It's going to be the kind of uh, persistence in observation of the user and if you were going to sit right there with your tiki torches in your hands like that you'd probably have a safe night but that's not how people act you know, and, and and part of the issue is, is that you know and again we get very comfortable i think we we can all give examples and of, of things that we've done and then look back on it and said wow i mean i got lucky yeah you know i didn't get hurt um i know better but for some reason, I got distracted. Um, you know, something occurred. You know, that's why we really stress. When you think of with, um, you know, with solid fuels like charcoal or wood, you know, think about that. When you turn your back and you walk away and you answer the phone, mm -hmm. let's say for example inside the house, you know, that's still burning. You know, it's not. It's not. It, it presents that hazard. If the wind comes up, yeah. I mean, you know, how many fires? I know Christy and I've been to fires where the result was something was going on. It picked up some ash got into some grass, ended right. up causing a fire, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the person ends up losing their home. Whereas, but I was only away for a minute. The, you and I have been in our backyards. One minute it's windy, next minute it's not. Right. Okay, that's why um, we like the idea is if you can do this and turn it off, like gas propane, right. you know, that's perfect. The because, source is eliminated Yep, the instantly. source is eliminated, correct. And so, yeah. you know, and, and that turns it off. You can't accomplish that with a wood burning fire or right. with charcoal. And that's why that, the importance of having that lid that'll close or the grates and so forth. And again, I'm gonna use the word common sense. You know, if that fire can go somewhere, then it should not, then you should not be doing that. Yeah, you know, just and, open flame as Christy said. And, and open flame. And you know, and, and that's where we're kind of at. And, and when you look back at that, those are the issues where when we, you look back and you say, how did this fire start? You know, typically that's what's happened, okay? Right. You know, that campfire that wasn't properly put out, the wind came up, everybody says, yeah, but I buried it, the fire went out. You know, the ash is just sitting in there being insulated. The wind comes along, takes that layer off yeah. after a while, something happens, you've got a nice little breeze. Think about it, how did, as a Boy Scout when you were doing it, how did you start a fire? You get that little bit of an ember going and you get in there and you give it a little bit of air. Same thing that's happening. It works just the same it works way. Works the same. So, you know, that, those are some of the things that we take into consideration when we put the restrictions in place. And I guess we can kind of look at that very fine thread between the two because mm -hmm. you say, well, Gary, though that can happen anytime. I could get I can get a swirling wind come up in the middle of December when it's been snowing all day, and that's true. That's true. But it's the surrounding conditions that right. have think, changed. Think of the humidity. I mean, just go outside and, and just go to some of that, that brush, you know. Right. And that's why we encourage people to take that, I call the grasses, those low-lying, cut them down. Because if something does get in there, it's not going to want to move as quick because it doesn't have that, that fuel that's this tall. Right. If it's down to here, there's not as much to burn. Yeah. And so that's why we constantly say that's what you should be cutting back. That's what you should be getting rid of to start with, you know. And so, you know, things like that. The conditions in March, remember when the humidity's up, that fire is not going to be as active right. because it's got humidity. If we're looking at single digit humidity, you're going to hear us say over and over again, and you've heard us say it, you know, the three things that we get excited about, low humidity, high temperatures, and high winds. Right. I mean, th those are like, that is the perfect recipe 
for something to go wrong. And we're in the, coming into that time mm -hmm. very, very quickly. We need to take another short break. We'll come back to Countywide right after this. Here in Northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. With over 100 years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your Northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. We welcome you back to the program, our final couple of minutes here, and uh, great information. Please take it to heart. Uh, take a listen to <clears throat> what our folks are talking about today. Contact your local fire jurisdiction if you have any questions. Can I burn this? Can I not? This grill, that grill, call. Find out. You've got, uh, most likely, fire prevention uh, specialists uh, ready to talk to you about uh, how to have a safe summer. Um, defensible space, I want to touch on that before we, we kind of wrap up here today. Uh, we, we hammer away at that in our newsroom. The two of you I know are always talking about that and kind of creating that safe zone around your home. Um, I, Gary, I asked you during the break and you said something really interesting I'd like you to share with the listeners. In my yard, I've got a wood pile from a, a tree that was cut down I'm using for firewood. There's no part, I'm in a little tiny place in Clarkdale, there's no part of my yard that's 30 feet from my house, which is the guideline to keep like a thing like a wood pile from your home. What do I do? You know, all of us, I, I'm in the same position. I, I have it where my neighbor's not 30 feet away from me. What you need to do is deal with the environment that you have, deal with the property that you have. You want to place that wood pile as far away from, from combustibles as you can, yeah. taking into consideration your, your property lines and, and what's on the property. So you may not be able to meet those standards. One of the things that I really encourage folks to do is to start with what I call that 5, 10 foot zone around their house, walk around their house. Because typically we have five feet, some areas a little more, but make that round and start there. And then work out based upon what you have. And, you know, and I think if you do that, you will make it more difficult for the fire to come onto your property and into your house. And by doing those things, you're also helping firefighters to be able to sure. help you in the event of an emergency. Sure. Again, just uh, applying that common sense, if you have to put a wood pile in a specific location due to your yard um, size, don't have fuel that leads from your house to the wood pile, you know? So <laughs> I again, chuckled, but what a great point, sense. and I'll, I'm glad you're not in my backyard right now. <laughs> so think about that. Think what our guests are telling you today. And again, if you have questions, we can't stress enough to call and find out. Uh, that's the best way to do it and have a, have a good, safe summer. Guys, thanks. Christy Gagnon, G uh, Gary Johnson, thank Fire you. Marshals at Camp Verde and Citadel. We thank you much. It's countywide, and we'll see you next time. This has been Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's Countywide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.